Well, this is going to be an interesting lesson, kind of more of a story lesson, so I do hope you enjoy it. A lot of times I will be teaching things. I know people want to get lots of things about how to learn more vocabulary, but really the psychology, how you think about things, the students that really do listen to these, uh, and I know they might not be for everyone, and this just means maybe it's maybe something you don't like or whatever, but to say it's not for everyone just means only some people are going to appreciate this video. But the people who do appreciate appreciate it, will really learn a lot, and hopefully they take something very important away from this that they can apply to their fluency. Well, the uh, the word, the special word that I talk about, uh, and this is something that most people forget, is empathy. Empathy. And before I talk about the application for fluency, I just want to talk about maybe empathy in everyday life. Now, if you're just looking at this video right now, the reason you're watching this video is because you want to improve in some way. Maybe you have, you know, some part of yourself that like enjoys me as a person or whatever, but really you are here for you. And I understand that. So I appreciate your time. I'm glad that you're here enjoying this video. You could be doing anything else in the world, but you're here with me right now and trying to improve your English. So that's great. So the thing about, you know, again, this video or whatever other product or anything else you might purchase, you're, you're there or or you're trying to get that thing for you. So to understand that, if I understand that situation, if I understand that I am here for you, then I'm going to create more lessons that are appealing to you or trying to help you in a certain way. So they're not here for me. This is not about how to make me a better fluent speaker of whatever or help me do anything. This is about how to help you. And when you think about this, because most people, pretty much everyone, myself included, we're trying to figure out some way to improve our lives. Uh, but we're, you know, usually just thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about like, how did some Something happened to me or what am I going to do tomorrow? What will I cook for dinner? But these are all things that are focused on ourselves. Now, this is a kind of normal thing. We understand why people do it because if you don't kind of focus on yourself, then maybe you won't be able to survive. So there are good reasons why we have developed this way. But if you want to help other people or if you want to learn different things, you have to reverse this way of thinking. And it's a, it's a difficult thing to do because it's so natural to focus on yourself all the time. But the more you can focus on other people, and this means even something as basic as just trying to listen more in conversation. So instead of trying to judge what's happening or try to say whether someone is giving a good argument or a bad argument, you really just listen to the other person. So uh, as an example, like uh, like earlier this week, I had uh, two separate people on the same day. Uh, each of them bought uh, like just some product from our website, uh, and both of them were quite quick to mail to mail us and say, "Hey, like there was a problem with our order," and like both of them were kind of angry about that. So this is just like here's kind of a quick story about empathy in that way. Uh, but two people had purchased something, uh, and then they're saying like, "Oh, like what did you do wrong about that?" So without thinking about what they might have done wrong, they're immediately thinking about what the other person did. So in that case, like, what did we do wrong? Why did we not deliver the thing we said we were going to deliver? Now, this happens in everyday life. Typically, when people uh, experience a problem in some way, they want to look for a, a reason why someone else did something as opposed to thinking like, well, gee, maybe I maybe I messed up. And this is a, a thing that really you need to develop you if you want to be successful, whether it's for business or language learning. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about the language learning aspect of this, but I just want to make it clear with this quick story. So both of these people were kind of angry at us, like, hey, why didn't you send me the thing that you know you said you were going to send? Uh, and then, you know, we're looking at the accounts of these people and like the first one, uh, we had sent something to the email address that actually was like overfilled with email. So it wasn't able to receive any emails anyway. So when we're saying something, uh, it wasn't able to be received. So we were finally able to, uh, to get that thing to that person. But it wasn't because we did anything wrong, but just because, you know, the, the email box was was full. Uh, the other example was a person that, it, again, they were complaining, uh, but they hadn't given us the correct email address. So they had misspelled the email address and then said, like, what did we do wrong about that? Now, I understand, like, just as a person doing business, like, I'm going to encounter, like, all kinds of people. Lots of people are very respectful and very kind and honest. And even if, like, maybe they get a delay in something, like, whether the problem was created by us because 
because, you know, problems do happen and that's okay. Uh, or they created it themselves. Lots of people are very patient. But I'm always surprised by the people that are like very quick to be angry about it and quick to blame somebody else when they are the cause of their own problems. And again, this is a human nature kind of thing that we all just deal with, even myself included. It's easy to get angry about somebody else. It's easy to look at someone else and think like, well, they're causing me to have a problem as opposed to wait, like maybe, maybe I'm doing something incorrect here. Now, again, uh, this isn't to say anything wrong with people. It's just part of being human. It's something that we all experience. So we're thinking about ourselves first and then being kind of quick to say like maybe the other person is at fault as opposed to thinking about how we might do something better. Now the language learning application of this is when you think about something like learning grammar and people are quick to think like, well, that grammar structure is odd in that English language or in that other language. So as myself, when I'm trying to learn, like if I was, you know, just like, Many years ago when I was just starting to learn Japanese and I was like, wow, like some parts of the language are similar, but others are not. And even just to give a quick example, maybe from Spanish. Uh, so if you want to talk about the adjective and the noun, like the order that we do these things, it's reversed in Spanish. So I might say like car red in Spanish, but in English I would say red car. And it's like, I know, uh... El coche roja or something. I, I don't I don't really know Spanish, but just something like that. So el coche roja. So I'm saying like the the car red. And if you're a Spanish speaker and I say that incorrectly, I apologize. But uh, the idea of thinking like, well, that's odd. They put the noun before the adjective or they put the adjective before the noun. When you're thinking about it in that way, you're, you're trying to judge the language from your perspective. You're missing the empathy there where you're just accepting like, huh, that's an interesting way of trying to do that. So if you think about it, like, let me try to accept this other thing I'm trying to learn instead of trying to fight against that and think kind of like about myself. So that language, the difficult thing about that language or just maybe it's just something different and logically there is no difference between a car red or a red car. It just like, which are you talking about first? If I say I have a red, like you still don't know what I'm talking about until I put the whole thing together. So I have a red car or I have a car and then you don't know what color it is. It doesn't really matter. So you need both of these things together. And so the order is not like one is not better than the other. It's just two different things. Now, if I lack empathy, if I don't have empathy, I'm going to listen to that and I think, well, that's different from what I do and I'm going to tell my mind because it's different that I should not be listening to that thing. But if I really listen carefully to that, if I think like, wait a minute, like that is, that's an interesting way of trying to speak. That's an interesting way of organizing uh, words in a sentence. And maybe I can think about it that way. That helps me develop the understanding of a Spanish speaker. And that's what you're going for. You kind of develop the mental understanding of something. And that's what leads you to developing the capacity to use the language. So it's not kind of the other way around, which is what most people think. They try to learn a whole bunch of the language, but they never, they never empathize with the speaker of the language. They never try to understand what it's really like to be a speaker of that language. So going back to Japanese, uh, in the case of Japanese, like it's like red car uh, or akai kuruma. So either one, I'm like using it, it's uh, adjective and then noun in Japanese in the same way that it is in English. So wow, that makes sense. That's easy for me. But maybe a different example uh, might be like in English, if I'm talking about a string of things in the past tense. So as an example, I, uh, I walked and then jumped and then ate. So I'm, I'm talking about three different past things. So I walked, jumped, and then ate. So if I want to say that in Japanese, like, let's see, I would say like, aruite tonde tabeta. So in that one, so I'm talking about, uh, like, te, te, and then the past form of it. Now I can use this in English in the same way, but again, the grammar structure is slightly different. So I'm, I have kind of an order of things I'm doing, but you don't know what I'm doing or what the tense is until the very last thing I say in Japanese. So aruite, tabete, or, you know, whatever the, the order of things is, but until the last one, uh, like tabemashita or tabeta, if I'm just like, again, I don't want to give a Japanese lesson here, but the point is it's like you could give a string of things and that's how I'm trying to think of it. I, I say like, okay, it's different from English, but like maybe there's another way that's also a good way to organize this grammar or a good way to organize this way of um, expressing this idea, but in a different language. 
So I don't, I don't think about how it's different from English. I think, oh, like I'm going to empathize with a Japanese speaker and try to understand how they're thinking about the language. Now, if I'm thinking about it in this way, then I think, oh, like this idea of like what I call chaining verbs. So like this, 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 and this, and all of them are like the te form, uh, of that in Japanese. And then only the final, the only the final one is maybe giving the particular tense. So if it's in the past, the present, or the future, or whatever. Then I think, oh, that's actually like an interesting way to organize that. So it's not like one is incorrect and one is, you know, correct. It's just these are different ways of organizing ways of speaking in English or, or ways of just speaking languages in general. So the more empathy you have, I tend to find, and I've like been doing this for over 10 years, uh, and I tend to find, uh, and this is again like the, the, this is a great English expression to tend to find something. So you, you, you notice things over time. So I tend to find or I find that people that have higher levels of empathy in life in general become fluent speakers of another language faster. And this is just something I've seen, like people that are understanding of other people in general are really good at like learning a different language. Now, this might not be true for everyone, but this is just, you know, from what I've experienced, just teaching people, working with them privately, or even the thousands of people uh, that I help, you know, just over the years that I've been teaching. So when you're thinking about learning a language, like use that skill of empathy in the same way that you would try to empathize with the people that you're speaking with in your native language. So people that you're, you're having conversations with them and you were quick to think like, well, you are incorrect or you are criticizing that person or you are doing these other things. Like you're just creating a wall that stops you from connecting with that other person. And the same thing happens with language. So the more you think, well, that's a stupid way to organize that or why do people do this or why do like why 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 do people do that this is what the person says that never really gets fluent because they're they're like cr literally creating a wall between the way that they think in the other language uh, and the way that they think in you know their native language so if you want to become a person that uses the language well you have to become the person that thinks in that language well and these are why, uh, or this is why I talk about things like psychology so much in these videos, because yes, uh, all of the grammar points and the vocabulary and pronunciation, all that stuff is a lot of fun. But if you don't have the way of thinking that helps you do all these things automatically, if you don't understand how to develop the habits that actually make you a fluent speaker, then none of it matters. Anyway, I hope it's been an interesting lesson for you. If it's been kind of difficult, it's something that really you should go back and review a couple of times. But just to give a quick summary, the more you can be empathetic, the more you empathize with the language. So whether it's you learning English or you learning something else, uh, the more you can do this in general, the greater and the faster you will improve and become a fluent speaker of that language, or in this case, uh, of the English language. So this is a language learning principle that is applicable to any language you want to study and just to human uh, kind of human interactions in general. So try to listen to people more, accept people more, even if you disagree, it doesn't really matter. Maybe you don't have to agree with what they're saying, but the more empathetic you can be, the more you can try to understand why they're doing something from their perspective. So this means like not getting too angry quickly or not criticizing other, the other things like that, that do come naturally to us as people, they come naturally to all of us, myself included. So that's why we all have to think about them uh, and really be conscious of these things as they're happening. But if you can apply this important principle of empathy, it will help you get fluent much, much faster. Well, I hope it hasn't been too long of a lesson for you, but these are, the, again, the, the kinds of things that are important to me because they have been so helpful for me personally becoming fluent in another language as well as helping all of my personal students. But if you have enjoyed this lesson, do click that like button. If you have not enjoyed this lesson and you want to dislike this, well, you kind of haven't learned anything from the lesson. But hopefully, uh, if you do and you have some kind of important criticism from me, I'm always happy to hear from your perspective how I can help you better. So if you disliked this video and you actually clicked the dislike button, take a moment and tell me why. Maybe it was too long or, you know, whatever that thing happens to be. But I recommend, like, I've actually never disliked a video the whole time I've been teaching on YouTube. I've, like, watched lots and lots of videos and have never ever disliked a video. It's kind of weird actually, I guess like some people maybe do dislike a video, but 
I think it's Mike for me more of like that empathy kind of thing. People take time to create videos, uh, and whether or not I disagree with that thing, like you know, it's something that people are creating. So I don't bother to dislike anything. Anyway, just a little bit of extra information about me. But if you have enjoyed it, do click the like button and let me know why you did like it. And also, if you'd like to improve and develop all the fluency habits and learn more about the psychology of things, the really important things that help you get fluent, click on the link in this video to learn more about uh, all of these things by taking our fluency quiz. It will help you improve uh, all of the different habits you need, whatever it is you struggle with, and we can help you do that absolutely free at EnglishAnyone.com. It can also help you learn to speak like I'm speaking like this. I'm just going on and on talking about whatever without taking any edits or breaks, and I can help you do that, again, absolutely free at EnglishAnyone.com. So click on the link in this video to take that free quiz, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson very soon. Bye-bye.